Next to the stage is Kyle Lichtenberg. Kyle, you guys just got a little fan club back there. That's nice. He's an Iowa native who's been in Des Moines since 2008, and he's been a fan of this event since he came to the Art Center event that we did last September, um, volume number six. He works for the Diocese of Des Moines, enjoys biking, hiking, and time with his sobrinos. Sobrinos, niece, niece and nephew. Very nice, very nice. All right, welcome, Kyle. Thanks. I'm here to talk about bridges. I think bridges are a prime example of a civilization at the top of its game. Uh, bridges, as you know, are, are something that go across some curveball that Mother Nature has thrown us. So we have to figure out a way to get across. It's an amazing synthesis, I think, between the science, uh, physics, mathematics, and then it's usually done with some kind of artistic flair. Um, to show that, yes, we've done it and we can do art on top of it. So here you have three major civilizations that have uh, been bridge builders. The Romans, uh, you notice the arches are not just pretty, they're actually physically uh, the, the, the unique physics that make it all happen. Um, the Romans were uh, taking water, peace, war, and people all across Europe for hundreds of years. The Chinese were another civilization that built bridges. This is a floating pontoon bridge across the Han River in China. It's about 240 feet long, built in 1170 AD. I think it's a fascinating example. You're invited to kind of sit and um, be there for a while as you cross the river. The Incas, another major civilization that was uh, known for building bridges. They are the originators of the suspension bridge. Can you imagine the, the Spaniards arriving in the 1500s and seeing this uh, amazing contraption going across a 60-foot chasm. This one's rebuilt every year by the people of this village uh, by a, a technique handed down over the last 700 years. Bridges occur naturally in nature. Naturally in nature. Um, this one is a uh, in Arches National Park, and I think bridges obviously have to reconcile with the natural world in some way. So this one, Corona Arch in Arches National Park. This one uh, is an ancient bridge in the Fertile Crescent, and it sort of fades back into nature. You might not even notice you're crossing the bridge until you're suspended over water and rocks. I think it's a beautiful example of how um, nature can kind of grow in and around the bridge as time goes on. This one reconciles with nature in a very different way. You might say, well, that's totally out of the out of the whole picture. But if you look at the tree line in the background of the image, it waves and waves and waves, kind of like this uh, bridge in Singapore. It's a pedestrian bridge, um, opened I think not not too long ago. So they have to they have to reconcile with nature. This bridge is called the Bridge of the Gods in Portland, outside of Portland, Oregon. It crosses the Columbia River, and with a name like that, it is a good lead into one of my favorite things about bridges, and that's that they're a liminal space. It's a space between spaces, a space where transformation, growth, or insight occurs. A bridge invites some sort of journey from one place to the next. This one, over a lake, meandering across a lake in Lucerne, Switzerland, uh, invites you to kind of uh, take your time, stand over this unique vantage point that you can't just stand and, and experience while you're standing on one end of the bridge. Here's our own Grace Lake Bridge, uh, built with memorial contributions. Um, I think about every time I cross this bridge, whether it's on foot or on bike, I think about all the people who are memorialized on this bridge, people who have crossed that great liminal space from this life, this experience, into whatever we believe is beyond that. So I think that's one kind of interesting example. And here you have bridge as uh, from the Zoroastrian faith. Um, they use the image of the bridge, it's called the Chindat Bridge, after death, crossing from death into the next life. Um, and the bridge is very wide for those who have had very good deeds in their life, and it's very narrow for those who have not had such good deeds. Bridges are not fail-safe. This is the uh, collapse of the I-35 the I bridge in 2007 in Minneapolis. Uh, it reminds us that any time we cross a bridge or enter into any liminal space in our lives, um, we put our faith here, in the, in the case of a bridge, in the science that, uh, that built the bridge, that constructed it, and that also, uh, we hope, will carry us safely across. This is the collapse of the Oakland Bay Bridge in 1989 at the 6.9 magnitude earthquake. One person was killed during that. So, setting foot on a bridge is not to be taken lightly. It's a leap of faith. And who better to talk about leaps of faith than Indiana Jones? This is one of my favorite movies. 
series. And um, you see this, this image. You want to talk about um, ultimate questions. We've talked about the beginning of life tonight. Um, talk about ultimate questions, sense of journey, adventure, moving from one place to the next. Indiana Jones is the guy to, to talk about that. Um, and he had this quest to, to achieve. All he could see was an empty abyss and had no reason to believe that he would be able to cross it. But he steps foot out onto this and nobody thinks it's nothingness and makes it across with none other than a bridge to carry him from one place to the next. Here is also our own uh, high trestle bridge, or Madrid's own high trestle bridge. I hope you get a sense of the, 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 the journey, the motion as you move across this bridge. But stop and look over the Iowa River, 13 stories below, and you'll have nothing else to do than think about these ultimate questions of life. One more ultimate question of life here is how are we going to sustain this largely unsustainable way of life that we've developed? We'd better use wind. So this bridge actually has not been built, but it's designed for a specific site in Italy and designed to use this wind tunnel of a canyon as you're crossing it. One of my big questions is why do people like to kiss on bridges? <laughs> Why do they scratch their names by the thousands into beautiful oak timbers in the bridges of Madison County? And I think this is it. I think it's because a bridge connects two disparate bodies together from one place to the next. And when people fall in love, they're, they're connected. And so they kiss, they join, just like the bridge connects two people. So I think that's why people like to kiss on bridges. You, you stand over it, love is kind of a liminal space, a space between spaces that transcends your own individualism and, and brings you together. And I hope the next time that you cross a bridge, you're able to stop, take a long view, and look at some of the, the more mysterious aspects of, of your own life. Um, this is the same bridge we saw at the beginning. Um, the French, it, it traveled, it's 900 feet over the French countryside, and here it's enveloped in clouds. And I just hope that you have a chance to think about some of those mysteries of life. Thanks.